and welcome to another video. Today we are going to look into creating a Ceph cluster from scratch using Ceph Admin. So this is going to be the automated way to create the Ceph cluster and it's going to be pretty fast. So let's just jump right into it. And first off, we have a couple of machines here. I have set up three machines that will be the Ceph cluster and I'm gonna log into the main one, the first one. So let's go to Ceph admin node one. And when we're logged in there, the first thing we need to do is install Ceph admin. We will use the program curl. So I need to install that on this machine. And after we have installed curl, we can just fetch the program with curl and download it to this specific machine. And when that is done, we create change mode on it. So it's actually executable. And then I need to run it as root and tell it that I want to use the Pacific version of it. So Pacific is the last or latest version of uh, Ceph. And at the moment, I would recommend you only to use Pacific with Ceph admin. The, it's a thing in Octopus as well, but trying to install it this way will not work in Octopus. So you need to use the latest version, which means that it's very new when it comes to Ceph. So then we will do a Ceph admin install and that's pretty much installing the packages on your system. So you have Ceph admin as a tool in your system. So we will not use this downloaded version, we will use the installed packaged version in our system instead. And when that is done, we need to bootstrap Ceph admin. So step two, bootstrap the Ceph admin. And in this case, we will bootstrap it with the monitor IPs that we will use. And in this case, I only have one system. So the first system, 98, will be my bootstrap for this monitor. So we will start that running. And when it does this, it will go out and fetch a bunch of packages. So Ceph admin and the installer of that is using the podman in order to run local cluster um, or local container images. So it will pull all the container images required to run a Ceph cluster in this network. It also has said here that it will use the CR, CDR network of uh, 122.168.6.0 for this cluster. So that will be the cluster network. And as we haven't specified any, uh, or that will be the internal network that we can contact our uh, nodes on. But as we haven't specified any separate cluster network, which we could do if we had multiple network cards, we could say that one thing is the external network and then we have this cluster network which is the internal network where replications and um, yeah uh, recoveries are done so we will not have the same network that we run that kind of traffic on and this will take a while so i'll be back when it's done and we are back and now we have bootstrapped our uh, little cluster here so if we go up here and look we see that we have this monitor IP and as I talked about the cluster network and then it will create this um, image here and load it up, initialize keys and monitor map, which we did in our uh, manual install. So look, you can look at that video if you want. And then it starts the monitor and it configures it with this minimal Ceph configure. Um, and then sets the public network, creates a couple of keys here and starts up the monitor. It takes a little while and then after that it will um, set the uh, orchestrator to Ceph admin. So Ceph admin will handle your Ceph cluster from now on and it will generate some SSH key and that's important because those we need to set to our other hosts and put those in the road account of our other hosts. 
and we have added the key to this local host here and then we have a placement of all these different services so monitor manager crash prometheus Dragon, and node exporter and lurch manager all of them will be placed on this specific machine and it en enables the dashboard mod module which is very important for us and then it will generate the self-signed certificates so now it should be available at this address and i have already set up my windows so it knows about the specific address and uh, then we have an admin and a specific um, password here then you also get this little command down here which you should keep because it's extremely important that you can go in and do manual uh, things if you get any problems with your Ceph cluster because most of the things is available in the GUI but not everything at the moment uh, so having the availability to go into a shell and as this is a dockerized environment you don't have the tools available to run Ceph on your local machine everything is in docker images so you need to download a docker shell image in order to run different commands in your Ceph cluster and you can turn on telemetry if you want and get more information about that. But I'm gonna jump into my little uh, cluster here. So I go to this address, need to allow this uh, specific, allow the certificate, and then it's admin and this specific password. And now I need to set the new password here. So I will generate a new password here. So there we go. So now I set the new password and I will go back here and actually create a password file and put now. So let's generate the new password here and take that, copy it in here and then copy it in here so I have that password so I don't lose it. And let's change the password here and let's go into our cluster. So now that we're in the cluster, we can activate telemetry if we want. And we only have one host, so we get a bunch of uh, issues here that says that you have too little uh, resources at the moment in your cluster, but you can expand your cluster. And this is something that is shown here on this page. You can't get to this page again because there is no expand your cluster in any of these menus here so there is similar functionality somewhere else but this specific uh, guide or wizard is not available anywhere else um, so now we see that we have this machine and it's f admin and it's a virtual box and i would like to add a couple of more machines and in order to do that i need to prepare those machines so first off it told us that there were a public key that we needed to copy so i need to cat this etc ceph ceph pub let's see so that's the public key that i need to put on all the other hosts so let's go out here and go into node 2 and then i need to that we first we will become root here and then I will create the SSH directory. And in that directory, I need to create authorized keys. So that file I need to create. And then I put that uh, in that file. So now the authorized keys should be on this host. And another thing I need to do is prepare this host. So there's a bunch of things that needs to be installed. So I will do first off an update here an uh, apt update so i will have all the newly available packages in this list shouldn't be that many updates to this and then i need to install ca certificates curl GNU packages and lsb release and all of those things are pretty much just to set the keys and so on for docker after I've done that I need to curl down and set the uh, docker keyring so now i have that installed and then i will create a source file called docker list uh, 
where I will put the information about Docker. So if we look at sources list, the Docker list, and we see here that it has created some something that can pick up Debian packages from download Docker, Linux, Debian, Bullseye, stable. And then I need to do an update again in order to get the Docker packages into my system. And I need to install all the Docker packages. So Docker is available on this specific local host. And after that, I also need to install the LVM packages for this Docker environment. There we go, now we can install LVM2, which is the package we need in order to handle the LVM shares or LVM uh, system. <laughs> so, so this is for the drives. If we want to add more drives, uh, the preferred way to install those and create those is as LVM module, uh, LVM um, shares. So it's a, the best thing is to have these tooling so we can create these volumes, LVM volumes. So now that I have installed all the packages that are required, we have Docker, we have set the specific key and this LVM so we can have local volumes uh, in our Linux environment. We could add this node to our cluster but I want to add node 3 as well, so I will prepare node 3 for us with the exact same procedure. I will copy over the key and then I will uh, uh, add these packages that we have looked into now. And when that, that is done, I will get back to you. So now that we are done with step 3, preparing the host, we can get, go back into our console here and we can add the new host. So we go in here and type Seth admin node 2 and then the IP address of that 99 and I can also add a bunch of labels here. So I want to have a monitor on this host, I want to have a manager, I want to have OSDs and MDS so I can run a file system. And you can also decide that this should be the Grafana host, for instance, that you want to run the Grafana uh, client on this host. So by adding a bunch of these different tags or labels, you can decide what should be installed on the different machines. Um, so this first machine here, we might want to go into and add, ed edit and change up. So we actually have monitor manager MDS on that. And OSD, and then I will add the last host here. So Seth admin node 3 and 196 6 100. And I add a bunch of these um, again here. So I, so I know what should be installed on these different hosts. And now that I have added the keys to the root account on each of these hosts. So by going in and adding the public key that were available on the main machines um, into the root authorized keys on both of these machines, that means that Ceph has full access to the other machines and are able to log in and install all the different packages that are required. And as we have already installed Docker, it just needs to pull down all the different images to the other machines and get them ready and up and running. We see now that it knows that this is a virtual box machine. It has one CPU, one core and uh, memory and some raw capacity here. And then two hard drives, two flash drives and so on. Um, but if we look at the other two hosts, it doesn't know anything about those yet because it's still installing information or installing images. So when that is done, I will get back to you. And we are back. And now we see that the uh, host has installed and we have all the information about hard drives and so on. So all packages are probably in position. So let's move on here and create some devices. So first off, I want to create some primary devices. And here is a very strange dialogue because primary devices is actually 
a way that you'd say what kind of devices should be preferred as primary devices. So here I can say that any uh, host name we can say, or we can say I want to have a specific type. Uh, so let's say that I want to have the, the type of HDD. So this should be my primary drives. That could be one way to set it up. So then I will get three primary devices. And then I wanted to have some wall and uh, DB devices as well. And because uh, these are all SSDs, so I chose a different type for those, I needed to split them up in different sizes in order to have anything else to select them on. I could select host, of course, but that doesn't really give me a good um, choice. So here I will actually say that my uh, wall device should be uh, 19.5. Uh, so then I have a bunch of wall devices there. And then I can go in and do the same with the, um, the uh, DB devices. So here I can say size and take the smaller one just to uh, switch them up. So these dialogues are a bit strange in order to select which devices you want as your main devices. The write ahead logs and the DB devices, so the database where it, they, it actually keeps track on where the different, um, uh, different objects are stored. And you can also enable encryption if you want in your cluster. If we go next, we see here that it will install one alert manager somewhere. It will install one Grafana server somewhere. It will install one Prometea server somewhere. It will install the node exporter everywhere. So if you install any host, it will have a node exporter. There is a bunch of other default services which isn't specified here, like monitors and so on. But what I know it's haven't specified is MDSs. So I will go in here and say I want the service of uh, MDS. And I could have the ID of MDS here also. And I want a label and I want it to be installed on the hosts that are called MDS. And I want three of them because if we will have a file system with a bunch of files in it, we should have redundancy. So at least three of those. So I will create that service. It will add it to this list. And if we go next, we will see here that it has a bunch of different service here that where at the moment only one is installed on each. So one alert manager, one crash manager, one graph on a one MDS, one manager, one monitor and so on but there will be more. So if we expand our cluster here and look at how it looks here, we see that we have three hosts, we have one monitor, we have no OSDs and so on, but this will change over time. So if we go into the host menu here, here something strange has happened because it actually says that we have three MDSs that it has put on host one. And that is because the other host has, hasn't really uh, started any services yet. So that will be moved later on. Um, if we go into services here, we see that we have the, the specific configuration on what should be installed. So first we have the uh, things that we saw earlier, we also see that we want to have at least two managers. And here it looks like it wants to also create five uh, monitors. And at the moment it has three of them running. So you see here at, that it adds more and more of the different things. Node exporter, we will have three of those. So it actually has run that. And here we see that it is refreshed and it adds more and more of them. Um, so if we go back to the dashboard here, we should see that we have all the monitors we need. We have two managers. The metadata services are not available because we don't have any file system yet. And we have some raw capacity and so on, which hasn't really updated because the OSDs are not available any, uh, yet. So it's still are trying to uh, push some OSDs to the different hosts. 
where we see here that the now these MDSs uh, have moved over to uh, the other services instead. So uh, Node 3, for instance, has this MDS now instead of Node 1. So it will handle it and will move services over to the different sites. And now we see here that we have actually two new created OSDs, three, but all of them are down, so they haven't started yet. So it works gradually to add more resources as we have defined it. So let's see here, we see there were three in total, all are down. If we go back to our system here, and we go to uh, node one. We can actually go into this shell. And as it is already configured, we could do it a little bit easier than um, it says. So we could actually run sudo uh, ceph admin shell and the other things are configurations in our configuration file. So if we ran it anywhere else, we would be required to add this uh, specific configuration. But as we already have that locally, we can just run shell. Um, let's see here, still they haven't come up, still working on that. But we have our shell, so here I can go in and say Ceph OSD pool create uh, Ceph FS create a new pool see when that's done and then I will have a one metadata for CFFS as well so the first one was the data pool and if we go back here we can see that those pools are available here uh, they are unknown where they should be placed because they, it doesn't really have any other things available we have now we are starting to get some raw capacity here it will probably create this um, uh, device metadata pool as well and then i can do a ceph fs create uh, ceph fs ceph fs uh, ceph fs uh, metadata so the first one is the actual name of the file system. I think it's setup as new. The name of the file system, the data pools, and then the metadata. Or now it's the other way around, metadata. And then we can have a bunch of pools that has the actual data. So this should create a file system with the metadata pool number two and the data pool number one. So if we go back here, we should have a file system. We have metadata servers here. We have a bunch of pages and we also have a bunch of raw capacity. If we look at the pool here, we see that we have this device metadata metrics. We have the this two pools that will handle our um, file system. And if we look at the OSDs, we have three of them up and running already and then they have wall devices and so on for better performance for writing and so on so that is the way to set this up which is pretty straightforward a lot of the things can be done in the gui which is good uh, what i realized was that in this configuration if we look at services the osds here has a size of six but it actually says that we want to install how many what whatever you see as an uh, drive we want to install an osd uh, which means if i go in and take any of my hosts down and add an extra data disk it will be installed as an osd i can't really decide if it should be a wall or a db device or anything like that at least not if it doesn't really follow into these different filters that I put in earlier. So if you have good filters and could actually switch over and say, okay, I have this specific type of device, it should always be my wall device, then that could probably work. But I think it's a little bit strange that it just adds things and you don't really have any control over it. Uh, another part is if you want 
to remove that drive and then put it in again via the shell, that is a huge hassle and doesn't really work well. Um, so if you want to run this, you should use the tooling that you have in the console and I think it's very limited at the moment. So for small clusters, for test clusters and and so on, this will probably work just fine. And for real production environments, I think it's a little bit too early. That, that's my main takeaway of this. You might want to try it out. It's very simple to get up and running, but I don't think it's ready for production yet. So that was what I wanted to talk about today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And if you have any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.